What's up, everyone? Welcome to NALCS tonight. They told me I could have the any cast that I want, so I chose the best of seven, and I got three of us here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I tied it together from the analyst desk. Kobe and Zyrena here to talk with me about what happened in NALCS today as well as yesterday. How you doing? I'm doing great. How you Picked doing? Picked me. I'm you know honored to be on. Uh, yep. I guess your the show. The third today. best of seven. Yeah. Ooh. Thanks for having okay. me, Freak. You're welcome. You're the first best of seven. I'm number two. That's the stack rank right here. You picked yourself second? Yeah, I'm second best. I mean, I have respect for Kobe. You're up there. Uh, so let's talk about what happened this week, of course. Uh, a couple of teams went 2-0. Up first, uh, Echo Fox, undefeated in first place. I said here last week, 18-0. You did. Me, we're one-eighth of the way there. So. Yeah. You also said you're going to keep saying it until they lose mm -hmm. a game. 18-0, quote me. Echo <laughs> Fox is great. And Echo Fox, yeah, taking down TSM and Cloud9. But remember, these were actually come from behind victories in both of them. TSM were up about 10,000 gold. Mm -hmm. Cloud9 were up, I believe, about 8,000 at one point. So it kind of reminded me of Immortals with Huni and Adrian in 2016, where it was like, even when they're behind, I still have this feeling of, no, 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 they know how to play these games and have these team fights. That's where they really excel is those skirmishes. It also kind of removed one of the drawbacks that people will always throw at undefeated teams. They're like, ah, yeah, they're just smashing early, though. How will they do in a late game? You know, how will they do from behind? Uh, yeah. Versus TSM, that sh probably should have been a TSM win. Like, that was a very big lead that TSM had and right. a lot of control in the game. And Echo Fox, they were able to say, uh, I mean, we haven't listened on the communications, but it seemed like they were able to stay, you know, fairly cool and calm yeah. there in the late game, playing defensively and farming up until they, you know, saw an opening. And Huni got destroyed. He in did. Both of those games at the start. He got dove in both their matchups. And I thought that that was really cool to see because it's not just the Huni show, right? You have Dardock, who got player of the game in their matches, and Phoenix, who was also in the running, too. Like, both yep. of those guys are stepping up immensely to help that team. So, yep. I, I bought that crypto, boys. So I was like, <laughs> my preseason power rankings had them third, you know, not number one, but I still had them up there. So you were also wrong because they're number one, right? Well, I mean, it's not the end of the season yet. Uh, all right, so you're going to predict they're going to go down. Still had them higher than everybody I'm, else, though. That's true, though. <laughs> I'm going to ride the 18-0 for now. Uh, let's talk about the next match that we really cared about, which was the Cloud9 100 Thieves one. 100 Thieves coming in undefeated. Cloud9 ended up doing pretty well for themselves. Yeah, we had kind of had the... Uh, the insane, this is really the matchup that made me look at, you know, what's going on in that bottom lane. Like, there's so many globals now, and, like, this Baron was absolutely insane. And Cloud9, really, handing 100 Thieves that first loss, I was not expecting that at the top of the day. But 100 Thieves, they looked really good after their matchup in the previous day. And, you know, we were saying, you know, maybe they're in that contenders, pretenders uh, spot and mm -hmm. looking a little bit more like contenders, in my opinion. I mean, this was just such a clean game from Cloud9. Yeah. As exciting as the Echo Fox versus TSM, you know, come back and all the twists and turns they had in that game. This was Cloud9 with a really well laid out strategy coming into the game, and then they executed on it. There was only like maybe a couple of hiccups super late in the game where they basically already had it wrapped up. Yeah. Um, but they never really felt worried, right? It was a very clean sort of snowball. Um, and one of those earlier victories than we're used to seeing in the current meta. So I just yeah. thought this was a really good sign for them, in addition to the fact that uh, Licorice, yes. we are talking about this week, was going to be the hardest exam that he's going to have because yeah. he has Huni and Someday back-to-back -back as opponents. He takes two super strong matchups into it, right? Offensive champions. He's playing Jace, uh, and he's playing Camille. Camille. Camille for the second yeah. one. And he plays these with high forward percentage. He's playing them well, and he actually executed really well today. Yeah, and basically it was like party in the top lane in those games. I remember just constantly we had teleports. We had Shen ultis throwing it off. Like, it was really like play around that top lane in that matchup, and I really loved watching that, because Licorice, he was getting a lot of attention as a rookie, and it seems yep. like it hasn't been going to his head, and Jensen even said he didn't seem really nervous on stage, yeah. and that he's played quite well. He's played four basically bruisers slash, you know, I mean, AD you know, champions, fighters, right? and not really anything tanky, so yep. I'm liking seeing Licorice on C9. It is interesting, because I, I remember talking with Stunt in the player lounge either, it was yesterday actually, just off camera, and he's like, yeah, you know, I don't know if people are surprised Licorice is good. Like, I thought he was going to be great the whole time. And it's like, yeah, but there's a difference between playing in Challenger and scrims and then on stage. Like, there's worlds of difference there where you can just choke hardcore and Licorice one who's holding up pretty well. Of course, the rest of Cloud9 looking good. I believe they're up to 3-1, and one, so that's looking pretty solid for them. One other game I want to bring up, though, is the CLG versus Golden Guardians. That one actually ended up being a bit close, but CLG finally got a win on the board as a result of the game. Yeah, you can say that. It was a bit close. There was, there were quite a few moments where the bit close kind of swung and there was a very uh, big difference and some very big plays for both of the teams, uh, yeah. honestly. Golden Guardians looked like they had a pretty good, you know, handle on this game early on. Then there was this Baron play yeah. where they didn't have teleport on their top laner. He was in base, actually. They started it even. 
And from that point, CLG kind of retook control. Um, yep. And then they were able to end it out. So, you know, that's a good sign for CLG. But it wasn't one of these super convincing, you know, nope. we're back at it, straight to the top sort of victories. Yeah, what else do you expect from a 0 and 3 team coming into that game? Yeah, I really did like uh, who he's playing that game with the yeah. split pushing on the rise. And while I was watching his player cam a lot, he is very vocal when he is split pushing. He's basically directing pretty much everybody on the map while he's doing that. And I really liked seeing that from CLG. Because remember, they were that team where it was like, they're going to start 1-3-1-ing with Darshan and Huhi in these side lanes. And they looked really good. I, I'd actually say last split, they looked best when they were doing 1-3-1s. And then sometimes Huhi would collapse on Darshan's lane. So I want to see them kind of go back to that and have more of that as a strategy. Yeah, it is good for two different, two different reasons. Because right now, it feels like CLG is kind of a 2v5 team. I think their bot lane is playing among the worst they have in their yeah. career. Rainover seems to still be in some level of a slump. He's running in and dying a lot. And Huhi's on top form. Darshan's in a good spot. And, and so, okay, one is they're a 2v5 team in a little bit, but also there are teams that actually went through running, which is interesting to see because we're seeing so many death ball teams right now. Everyone's playing control mages in the mid lane. You're playing tank sports like Tom Kench, where like you can't get picks anyway, so why bother? And they're actually doing something at least a little bit different, which is fun to see a couple different styles come through. We're gonna move on to individual players as we talked about CLG having some good performers. Player of the game totals here at the end of the second week. Of course, every team has played four games. You can only get player of the game if you've won. And we can see two players with two honors to their names with Dardoch and Febivin. I want to point out that with uh, Clutch being two and two, he's gotten all of them. Yeah. yeah, I mean, one extra game is not the ginormous lead or whatever, <laughs> but these two players are pretty interesting because uh, we'll start with Febivin here on the Azir game. This is the one that caught all the attention from everybody. And that was another one of the kind of question mark CLG games where even in the interview after afterwards, Febivin was like, I don't really know what they were doing there. Um, and, and it was a lot of, of effort in, in getting him to this like 10-0 Azir status that, right. that he was. But um, he had some very good, just if you look at the individual mechanics that he's been able to pull off and the kind of decision making, they mentioned holding on to his ultimate until there was a really key moment instead of just kind of using it in a team fight. So there are a lot of little things that do bode well specifically for him, even though some people will point to, okay, but you know, opponents were doing some silly things. Yeah, it's always interesting as well when you look at player of the game because if you look at stacked rosters, more people are actually kind of competing for it, right? If you look stacked at Echo rosters, Fox. like Echo Fox, exactly. Dardock is on the top still. And that's yeah. why it's impressive, because <laughs> Dardock getting two, Phoenix has one, and then uh, I believe Huni has one as well for the Lucian game Pretty at the very sure, yeah. start. So they, even though they've won four games, it's not like one person is carrying them to victory. They have multiple carries, whereas Clutch, they have those two wins. Mm -hmm. Bevovin's kind of the guy who's been getting them those wins. They, The bottom lane that they tried to, you know, kind of play through sometimes it doesn't actually like work out they're more stable right and solo hasn't had incredible performances either so when you have a team that's around like one person they're more likely to get that player of the game and you talked about uh versus echo fox teams have been camping hooney and it was like a couple of games and that's the person who you expect to have all the player of the games right but it's they're again, stopping them from getting them it's another <laughs> of like yeah oh Hold them it's down. really good when you can have multiple people that are viable for player of the game if someone gets camped right so it's just more options. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you then to you guys, because again, lots of competition here, only four games in. Uh, who are the people that aren't number one in the player of the game standings that you think have been having a really good season so far? Ooh, uh, Phoenix and Smoothie, I think, are the two for me. Because okay. Phoenix, this guy, I, he came in and it was like he just bodied Febovin, top of the player of the game standings, right? Just <laughs> obliterated him on his ear. And then he kept having consistent performances. And even up against Jensen, even in CS, right? Able to pressure the map at the same time. And so he's going up against these guys that you'd normally be like, oh, if somebody comes back to the NALCS, you got to kind of watch them up against Jensen, Bjergsen, and all of this talent. And he's just doing just fine. It's like Phoenix was gone for a while. He was probably training somewhere, hidden on a mountain or something. It was called NA Challenger, but he sure, yeah. eventually came back. And now he's holding up and he's doing incredibly well. And I'm very impressed by him. And another player you mentioned, I guess, is in Smoothie. Part of that C9 bot lane, one that I think didn't get spoken of a lot, but they have been consistently incredible. And again, we're going to talk about Smoothie specifically here. Was very good today. And he was good all weekend. I loved his plays. There was only one thing was the hiccups that I talked about, you know, later in the game after they had this ginormous lead, um, them ending it out. He has been, in, you know, throughout history, like very good timing on his Tarek ultimates. And he was one of the first Tarek players, you know, to adopt the champion yep. here in North America. They could have used it better as a team. Um, and you can say, okay, well, you should coordinate with the tank who's going to go in as well as the Tarek player or, you know, who's the one uh, that you're actually calling for that. But mm -hmm. that would probably be the only, you know, little demerit, I guess. Uh, Suboptimal From ultimate. this week's play. But, yeah, because I think Cloud9, uh, the team overall has really had kind of a second wind 
all the hype after like day one uh, or in week one was about the undefeated teams, right? But since sure. Cloud9 lost one early on, there wasn't the same level of hype. Mm -hmm. But I think in addition to Smoothie, you know, Jensen has been right up there as well. And Cloud9 uh, are going to come on strong as kind of one of the now dark horses since everyone was attention was taken away sure, well, people yeah. were saying they lost the off season right and, and that's like, oh reason. no they lost contracts and they lost impact it's like they got licorice who's proving that he's actually quite good and he's playing these bruisers yeah, and sure. then they have Sven Scarin who you know he's doing death leader yeah he's doing Sven Scarin <laughs> things I guess but I still feel like in those situations your jungler's going to look the worst when you have to like check for vision and stuff so I think Sven Scarin does still play for the team we aren't seeing like the least in Sven Scarin that we are thinking of sure. but licorice is kind of pulling that att uh, attack damage duty in sure. the top lane. Yeah, it is interesting. So let's actually move forward then to what we're going to see next week. 8.2, which is on live right now, if all of you playing at home, is going to hit Summoner's Rift for the pros here starting in week three. 8.2 had some big changes. Uh, first one, giant reworks of support items. Sight Stone's deleted. Now completing your quest gives you the ward active. Uh, Relic Shield poaching is probably gone from bottom lane. Spellthy's yeah. poaching is probably gone from the support role. Who wants to start? Biggest thing, this is to me is the biggest thing, right? Because everyone's been complaining about Bottom lane, double relics. Not yeah. only is the healing nerfed, but because of the sight stone, it's changing into sight stone now yeah. from quest, you don't get the big shield. And that was something that a lot of people, you know, in solo queue will just like copy pros and yeah. people are just like building relic shields and like, yeah, this is great. And they didn't even like exactly realize how or when. Yeah. But the quest was a big part of it. What? Exactly. <laughs> Immediately when you get this giant shield. <laughs> that that was a big part of the power. So that being moved away and it turning into the sight stone upgrade and all those things, I think is gonna be one of the biggest changes, even though this patch is actually loaded with quite a few things that could affect the meta. Yeah, and I'm actually really wondering what's gonna to happen to the whole landscape, because this takes away Frost Queen claim from like Vladimir, Malzahar in the mid lane, and then in the bottom side, the Relic Shield being taken away kind of uh, from AD carries, does this also affect supports, right? Because now your, I think po it does. your poke is gonna stick if you start playing poke again with Arcane Comet. Right, right now in 8.1, the only viable supports are tanks and the super defensive squishy supports that don't rely on winning lane. You just have a pushing lead and you hope for priority. But yeah, is Zyra playable? Is Brand playable? Like in, right? Lulu MF lanes with those work again. Can you play aggro AD carries, right? Like is Caitlyn actually gonna be a good champion now that you can actually poke people down? I think those are gonna be really important. Let's move on though to champion changes. Uh, Nunu. Obviously, over buff in 8.2 got hot fixed after the first day. Still seems and very still strong. over buff. Yeah. Still probably a bit strong. Yeah. So we we may or may not see you know depending on how much the team philosophy revolves around uh, that type of jungling because it is it is quite different. Um, still see Nunu uh, even with the hot fixes and that all coming in. Yeah. You know when patches come to the LCS, we do apply the hot fixes that were uh, issued during them. But even more uh, than Nunu, everyone always thinks of the counterpart to Nunu as the Azir combo. Mm -hmm. And since Malzahar also received some nerfs, uh, we really do think that there's going to be extreme focus on Azir. And that might result in us not seeing him as much because he'll get pushed from, oh, we're always going to pick him to, we're always going to ban him. Yeah. Yeah. And that. It's kind of interesting because it means there's some bands that are going to shift around, right? Malzahar will probably exchange out for Azir. Orn will probably exchange out for whether it's Nunu or even Rise, and you might see less Rise. So that's kind of my thought on it right now is we're going to start seeing more mid laners because some of them got nerfed from that S tier and more bands are freed up. I got some suggestions for ah. you as well because we've already seen the Xerath, so it's not like, oh, some crazy pick. But I think that Xerath is extremely strong right now. And even though people were... Uh, kind of criticizing Bjergsen's play or like there are question marks around it. Yeah. I really think Xerath is very strong right now. He has basically infinite wave clear, which is the most important thing for competitive with the new mana flow ban, his passive auto attack giving him back mana. You, you basically can clear the wave consistently and yeah. have this long range threat. And Bjergsen, very high skill accuracy, and he displayed a, definitely sure. a mastery of that champion. So I think that more people uh, will actually either start practicing Xerath or who already have been, bring that out. Velkaz is kind of in a similar thing where you have that super long range. It's uh, not yeah. quite the same as far as the uh, mana sustain. We've but seen some people like bring out the Velkaz. He's around like once in a yeah. while, right? I, I really feel like those ones, we might get to see a couple more of those. And then, of course, the pocket zillions for the guys who are actually quite good at it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Cassiopeia will probably jump yeah. up as well. We saw Phoenix play it as a counter to the rise. I maybe. actually saw, uh, shoot, I can't remember what league it was even, but I saw a highlight of a Cassiopeia, it was like level two, 
kind of cheesing with the precision. Um, presence man, of mind plus presence mana of flow mind. Bang. Infinite mana, just all in the mind. Leveled up to level two. So seven seconds after you level up, you can just spend as much mana as you want. And Cassiopeia, since you have these Cassiopeia. instant casts, I was like, oh my God, that's some tilting cheese. <laughs> but you can, you can check. Like People will now probably check and be like, ooh, it's a precision Cassiopeia. Mm -hmm. I think I know what the plan is. Uh, yep. Then the only question is, can you actually play around that? Yeah, it'll be fun to watch for, though. It was interesting. Let's move on to one final thing. Next week's schedule, Saturday, once again, kicks out from North American LCS. There's the five games on your screen. To you two gentlemen, what are the ones you're looking at most importantly in this uh, third week of LCS? I'm watching uh, Clutch Gaming versus 100 Thieves very closely. I'm looking at that mid lane matchup in particular because that's Ryu versus Febavin, the guys who were on H2K. Of course, Ryu came in. Uh, and then was replaced by Febavin when he came over for Phoenix One. Mm -hmm. And it's Febavin versus Ryu and Prawley, his former coach. True. Yeah, I think I would also pay attention to the one right before that. Even though Optic Gaming had a slow start with their 0-3, their victory uh, just a few games ago today uh, was definitely convincing. And with kind of this resurgence of hype around Cloud9, since their you know rookie top laner is performing very well, yep. Uh, that, this is going to be an important kind of question mark for them to answer. Are they going to be able to kind of cruise over any sort of bottom of the half teams and actually like make a strong run for the top spot early on? Yeah, I think all the Cloud9 fans right now can be very hopeful. The team looks good and, and they can keep pushing forward. And Optic, as you mentioned, got a win on the board. So they can start saying, all right, now it's time to start taking names and see mm -hmm. if they can move their way up. As you guys saw on the graphic a little bit ago, Azay will be hosting an uh, NALCS lounge stream with Febavin and Power People as well. So stay tuned for that one on Saturday evening's game during game five. It'll be wonderful, and I'll be sad that I'm not doing it. Thanks very much. Kicked Jim. out, Freak. Yeah, I got, I got kicked out of my own home. It's okay, though. It's been fun hanging out with you two. I'll see I, at least one of you next week as well, because Jasper's going to be on this show. I'm not picking him ever, but one of you's going to go be play honest, I see you every week, no That's matter what, true. anyway. I will, see, well, I will see you both next <laughs> Can't week. Can't avoid it. Can't avoid it. All right, that's going to do it for us. Thanks for watching, and we'll all see you next week. <laughs>